this uh, tutorial for uh, hardware design. Very basic stuff, but it can be it can give you guidelines about uh, things you can do. So, it's for things like that. It's not for software. And more particularly, uh, okay. And more particularly, it's for designing uh, ah, no mouse. Uh, this kind of circuit of chip. And there are two kinds of chips. There are some that are analog, so they handle various signals, and some that are digital. And so it's only, it's a talk about digital design, digital chip. Okay, the first thing to know is that designing a chip is very complex, requires a lot of knowledge, a lot of tools, and it's also very, very, very expensive. Well, only big company can afford to design a very complex and very, big, well, a very big chip. Hopefully, there are some kind of chips, like this one, that can be programmable by user. So, the features of the chips are completely defined by the user. Usually it's, it's uh, defined by uh, the builder of the board, but you, you, can, get, you can buy board with, such, with this kind of chips and program it by yourself. It's because it has a very particular architecture which is composed of a logical block, so where you can define the logical function that will be done, and a network of connection that is also programmable, and the user will also define how the signals are routed within this network. And there are also pads, so what are uh, available on the connectors, and they are also programmable at least to set direction of the pad and uh, other features. Well, it's a talk about digital circuit, so we are only speaking about zero and one. It's very simple, it's, a, well, it's about a binary logic. So, the um, way to do computation on binary logic is using gates. They are I would say three basic gates, which is a NOT gate, so it just inverts the signal. If you add a zero at the input, you get a one. If you add a one, you get a zero. It corresponds to the TID in uh, the C language. You have OR gate, so as, as soon as one of the input is one, the output is one. If both inputs are zero, the output is zero. This corresponds to the pipe, to the logical pipe operator in C. And there is the end gate, which is whose output is one, only if and only if both the inputs are set to one. And this corresponds to the ampersand operator, to the end <laughs> operator of C. Well, this looks like very simple, maybe too simple. You can say, okay, what can we do with only three operators, three logical operators? But you get a lot of power by combining them. So, for example, usually the XOR, so our exclusive OR operator, which is expressed with a caret in C, can be created by all the previous gates. So, here, if both uh, what is uh, what's well ignore? If both if both output are one, and not both input are zero, the output is one. This is the usual symbol for XOR. And with the XOR gate, you can also do computation, well, mathematical computation, like for starting an adder. 
So an adder, one bit adder, is in fact a XOR gate. So an adder is a little bit simple, and we can complete it by designing what we call a full adder. So uh, I would say half adder is a simple adder and the carry. So the carry is one only if both inputs are one. And if you want to be a little bit more complete, you can design a full adder with an input carry and output carry. So it becomes a little bit complex. It handles all the various cases of the possible inputs, value of the inputs, and generates the sum and the output carry. And usually it's too complex to be written like, like this, so on scheme you abstract with a box saying, okay, it's, a, it's an adder. And with this full adder, you can do things that are a bit more complex because you can group them together. And here you have a 4-bit adder. And if you want to 32-bit adder, you can just replicate this scheme several times. So you have inputs A and input B, the sum, and at the end, a carry that you can ignore. This is how you do a summation, an addition in hardware. And if you can add watts, you can also multiply. So you replicate the adder several times, and you either, it's like a, a multiplication on uh, the pen, paper and pencil, you add only if the bit is set to one, and each time you shift. So this is how you can do a multiplier in hardware, starting from adder, starting from simple gates. So, as you may, as you have seen, you, just using simple logical gate, you can do, I would say, almost any mathematical function, well, almost any simple mathematical function in hardware. So, from in, you, get, you have inputs and you compute outputs. That's nice. But in fact, it's not that powerful because very quickly your design becomes very, very big. Have you have seen how big is a multiplier? If you do a lot of multiplication in your computation, it will be very, very large. And one way to, short to shorten the computation is to use recursion. You, you want to reuse the output in as inputs. Unfortunately, or as a matter of fact, you can't do that easily. The reason is because hardware is not about only logical concept, it's also about physical concept like time propagation. If you, if you come back to the full adder, there are three inputs, and in fact, the times, each time there, are, there is a gate, it takes time to compute the output because there are some capacity, capacity in, the, in the design that are hidden. It's not, um, it's not uh, uh, lightning fast, it takes time to compute the output. And as a consequence, the output are not ready at the same time. So you may expect a perfect output, like in this diagram, but in fact, for example, uh, the output of A0 comes just before, well, before the output of A1. And if, you, if there are a loop, it will uh, drift more and more, and for example, the output of A2 will be available much later, and because of that, you will have wrong uh, outputs at many times. So you don't know where is the correct output. 
So you can try to avoid this nasty effect by, for example, balancing the circuit, but it's very, very, very hard. So the main rule in when you do digital design is never have direct feedback. And the way to solve that is to use what we call a, a register, a memorizing uh, element, which needs a clock. And this particular gate, what we, well, we call it a flip-flop, will only will drive, will memorize the input and will reflect the input only at some times when the clock is active. So here, for example, the clock is active. So the, um, the input of, of the flip-flop here will be reflected to the output just when the clock is active here. Again, here the clock is active. The input is here and will be reflected on the output here. And with this kind of circuit, you have a perfect, well, uh, perfectly clean output. That's the reason why we always use, well, almost always use clocks in digital circuit. And then the reason why any digital circuit has a maximum uh, clock rate due to the time it takes for the loop. And uh, also a performance attached to any digital circuit. So most of the digital circuits are composed of logic gates that do computation and flip swaps or registers that are used to synchronize the circuit, the computation. So that's the base of how to design a circuit, computation, synchronization. It's possible to design a real circuit using Schematic editor, well, it works well for very simple circuit, but as soon as it becomes a little bit complex, people prefer to use an HDL, which is hardware description language. It's like a language, a C language or Java language, but that target speci specifically um, hardware. There are two main uh, hardware language, uh, very log and VHDL, and here I will use VHDL. So we have this kind of board with a programmable circuit, FPGA, and since uh, about two years, we have a complete uh, open source software tools to program this kind of circuit. So there is a synthetizer named Yosis. There is a place and route, I will uh, explain that later, that is named Arachne place and route. And there is iStorm, which is used to uh, create the, the, binary, the binary stream to program this circuit. So this board is about 20 euros, so very affordable. And it is supported by open source tools. So it's very nice for, uh, for beginners. So the first, uh, well, the only example using VHDL. Uh, this describes, the, well, an entity describes the interface of the circuit, which means how it will communicate with the environment. So there is one input, which is the clock, and on this board, the clock is, uh, is generated by a circuit on the board. And five outputs, which are routed on this circuit on the five LEDs. Well, it's well, not very easy to see it, but uh, I will show. So you just describe with an entity the interface, inputs and outputs. And in VHDL, you have the architectures which describe the internal of the circuit. So I have an intermediate wire 
which is which which is a internal clock because the external clock is three megahertz, and if I try to blink the LED at at three megahertz, you will see nothing. So I use a divider to go to to divide to four hertz, which is visible at, at this point. So all the LEDs will be blinked together at four hertz, and how I convert from three three megahertz to four hertz. I just use a counter that is incremented each time the clock uh, has, has a rising edge from zero to one. So each time the clock is rising, either I have reached the top of my counter, which is three million minus one, and so I reset the counter to zero, and then I switch the clock, or if I, know, if I haven't reached the maximum of my counter, I just increment it. So the counter will increment it until 300, and then at 300 it will revert to zero and switch the 4 megahertz clock. You have to know that in any uh, hardware description language, everything is parallel. So this executes at the same time as this one, this one, this one, this one, and the process executed at the same time as this one. Everything is parallel, except that within the process, execution is sequential. So this is not a tutorial, a complete tutorial about VHDL. It's just uh, a view of uh, how it's done. So once you have written the entity and the architecture, we will go to synthesis which we will convert it to uh, binary code used to program the, program the FPGA. And using uh, the GHDL front end, you first analyze the, the files. So you let <laughs> the compiler know about these files. And then using the, the synthesizers, you say, OK, I want to generate a circuit for LED, which is known here. And I want to target this FPGA. So F this FPGA is uh, ICE 40. And you specify the output file. So there is a lot of processing that is done on the input file. <coughs> and it generates what we call a netlist, which is a net of gates and of registers. And then you can use Directly PNR to plus to place all these gates. So it will try to assign each gate to the logical blocks of the FPGA and to route all the nets. So it's very a little bit technical. It's done completely automatically. And if it works, you you're okay. And with it, well, usually it works. Usually it works. It doesn't work if, for example, you are using too many gates and there are not enough gates of the, on, the, on the FPGA, or if you are just at the limit, the place and router can say, oh, uh, no, I, I cannot find, uh, all, I cannot find uh, the routes. And when you place and route, you also specify which pads is assigned to all the inputs. And then you have to program the FPGA, so in fact, on this board, you have a USB connector, and the USB connector is connected to a, to a flash. So you write a binary to the flash, and the FPGA, when it is started, it will read the binary from the flash and program all, this, all the uh, root network and the, um, and the logical block. And once once you, once you have flashed, you have written the, your binary stream in the flash, it's okay. So it's not exactly the one I have programmed. But you could see LED blinking. In fact, it's rotating. It's a different, it's a slightly more elaborate design. It's rotating, but almost the same.
So this is all the open source tools I have used. Uh, okay, I, I am the developer of GHDL, so that's why I <laughs> I've used it. <laughs> uh, UCS is a synthesizer, but it also is that also um, the Angular front end, which is more and more uh, well, it is almost feature full, while the VHDL front end is just uh, well, it's still work in progress. But that's uh, so you, you have a really uh, tool chain, open source tool chain for this kind of uh, FPGA. And that's it. Time for a couple of quick questions. <laughs> uh, which manufacturer is the, the FPGA coming from? Uh, it's uh, Latis Semiconductor. Well, you, if you look on Google for uh, ICA40, uh, you will find it. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Ah, debugging. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Uh, well, there are many answers. First, if you don't do bug, you don't need to debug. <laughs> uh, second, what you can do with, um, once you have written your uh, design, you can s simulate it. So it's completely software approach, and you can see, uh, you can try to feed uh, inputs, and you can see uh, what are the outputs. Or you can write text bench to be sure that your design behaves correctly. And sometimes it behaves correctly on the, on the paper, I would say, and when you program, it doesn't work. And then uh, it's not easy. Usually you have to, you can, you can, you have to add some uh, circuit to try to understand what happens and using oscilloscope. But on that, this card is difficult. But then is it possible to add digital proofs for the live debugging or not really? Yes, but only on the external pads. On the external parts, so yeah. no internal digital proofs. No. Unless you want to add uh, your own circuits that uh, try to read various nets okay. and outputs on the external pads, but okay. no. Okay, mm, maybe I missed. Is it uh, is a um, open source tool for simulations? Yeah. Uh, GHDL? Uh, GHDL does simulation for VHDL and Icarus Verilog does simulation for Verilog. So, it's complete. Thank you. Uh, please stand again.